Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mihir Joshi, and welcome to another episode of the MJ Show. And uh, you know, the guest that I have lined up for 9 p.m. has already come on. She is precisely on time, as I kind of expected she would be. Uh, but you know, she's got this humongous empire right now. That's how I I look at it. I mean, everybody knows about Miss Malini and the various different things that. Miss Malini's, uh, you know, the company does as well. But today we're going to find out a little bit more about the person behind it all, the person who kind of started it off. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on the MJ Miss Malini Agarwal, and we're going to, and I'm going to tell you how we actually met years before. In fact, if I'm not wrong, if I am not wrong. We met even before the whole Miss Malini empire began. So here we have uh, Malini Agarwal. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Excellent, thanks. And I was just telling everybody, giving you a little bit of an introduction. While you actually don't need one today, because I think you are <laughs> the most recognized face on digital by far. Like I can't think of anybody else who is more recognized with entertainment right now than Miss Malini. So you know, but before we get into this massive empire that you've created for yourself, let's go back to the start. How did the Miss Malini journey begin? That's what I want to find out about. And I also just realized that we both know each other before. the miss malini thing began right yeah i think so i would just um i was in radio i was at go 92.5 actually i think so i had just started the blog as a hobby at that time but you know people always ask me this question but i had never had any idea that i was going to end up doing this because there was no such thing as blogging as a career there was no such word as influencer really right <laughs> um so my first job was actually a professional dancer i was a backup dancer for sukhbir for about 6 years in delhi uh which was super fun and then i ended up moving to bombay and i worked for mtv india um what's funny is that growing up for me the cool career of choice was to be a vj so i actually came to bombay hoping to be a vj and showed up at the mtv office with like four kodak prints and they were very kind and then sent me off on my way but years later i ended up getting my own show on uh, vh1 so it all came full circle but from yeah. mtv i went to radio at radio i you know this radio station was owned by midday so they gave me a column in the paper called malini's mumbai and looking back it's kind of the first iteration of miss malini in a you know print sense um and i remember i was you know i used to write this column but i was uh, on a trip to dubai in 2008 with some friends and i was complaining about how you know i go to all these events and i cover things but when i submit my column they always edit it down for space and i have so much more to say so that's when a friend of mine karan wadera said why don't you start a blog and i literally was what's a blog um back then and then he actually said you know it's like an online diary and i was like but who reads it and he said don't worry about that and he made me a wordpress account log in and sent it to me and i'm literally like i think may 5th 2008 i wrote my first blog like it's just been about 12 years wow that is insane. so yeah actually exactly 12 years it's 12th of may yeah. today and uh, a little over 12 years since you started off your journey and i remember exactly. like you said you know we met uh, i i was like i used to do a sunday show on uh, on radio 1 where i That's where right. i didn't interview a artist and i i look at that as kind of the first iteration of the mj show because what i did on radio for almost 8 years on fm rainbow and then on radio 1 is what i took on to the digital platform and you took your blogging to like the biggest possible level that can can be imagined but you know like you said when you started off 12 years ago blogging was a very new concept uh what was that first uh point that came in your uh, you know in your journey where you felt like Wow! Okay, this is really exploding. A lot of people are actually checking out my my stuff. What was it that you put out on your blog, which made people go like, "Hey, I want to find out more about Miss Manani." Well, first, I'm going to say hi to Ajiha, who's tuned in from Pakistan. It's actually pretty cool how people can tune in from different parts of the world, and we're all connecting. Uh, and in fact, I'm having Zoom conversations with friends who don't live here more than I am with the ones who live here. I think for me, a couple of different things happened. I never really planned to be a, you know, it started off as a gossip blog, but then it changed very quickly into more positive content. And I decided early on that we're only going to write things that we can say to someone's face, which makes it very difficult to write gossip, which I was totally fine with actually. Um, and I think a couple of things happened is we broke a few stories, right? So the fact that Ranbir and um you know katrina were dating we broke i ra- ran into salman khan at a bar at china house 2 in the morning one night so these little things happen where people like to you know uh, hear this stuff and that sort of exploded uh, the blog at that time because there weren't any other people doing entertainment content digitally so you had like your big websites from big newspapers but they didn't really focus on pre creating content digitally obviously it was just sort of a copy paste of some pictures from an event or the newspaper the actual print um 
And so those things happen. But I think that a couple of other things were that one, I remember I got a, an email from the One Drop Foundation that said, we're doing something where we're actually doing a broadcast from outer space and we'd love for you to cover it and we're going to send you a video camera. And I was like, why would you send me a video camera to write a blog? That's crazy. And this is when, you know, people weren't earning any money. And in fact, I wasn't doing it for the money. I was also doing it because I, you know, just loved it. I had another job. I was working at Channel V as well. And I, I was so amazed that I was like, wow, there's something to this. And because we were the first ones doing it, a lot of people would get in touch. Then, you know, movies started wanting to promote stuff. And I remember distinctly being so sad when I did my last radio show. I remember very dramatically playing Vocelli as the last song and putting the faders up for the last time. I'm sure you know that, how that feels. Um, and I remember feeling like, God, I'm never going to be so happy at work as I was doing radio. But then like only a couple of months later, I happened to be at Ghetto's bar in Bombay and um, somebody asked me what I do. And I said, well, I, you know, I used to be a radio jockey. Now I'm a blogger. And they're like, what's your name? And I said, Miss Malini on the blog. And they were like, oh, I read your blog. And I was mind blown that how is that possible when there could be, you know, billions of pages for you to go to. And you have so many people like I don't know, 20 million people in Bombay. How does this person come to come on my blog. So then I sort of realized, okay, there's something here. And I felt that same excitement and rush that I used to feel on the air. So then I knew it was for me. That was awesome. That was really cool. Uh, so from making a, a blog, then into getting into video blogging, blogging as it is now called, uh, to uh, creating a, a, a website, like you said, where you, know, you were uh, giving entertainment news to now having multiple platforms of Miss Malini. Like I, I saw today, I was, you know, when I, when I put up a graphic promoting and, you know, letting people know that Malini is going to be on the show, I just mm. typed uh, at Miss Malini. Ms. Malini. I got her. <laughs> you see, like all then the I found that Miss Malini yeah. trending. Then I found Miss Mal yeah. Ms. Malini fashion, Miss Malini. <laughs> Ms. Malini. So there are like, what, nine? Nine different? They're probably, yeah, probably around nine. Yeah. So you see what happened is that we, we used to put everything on the main Miss Malini handle. Then we realized that it was getting overwhelming because there's some people who just like fashion. There's some people who just like Bollywood and then not necessarily the same people. So we thought, okay, we'll break the handles out. So someone who's following gets that, but can also follow, follow the main handle for little snippets of things happening. And actually, I also tried to separate myself from Miss Malini because everyone's favorite joke is you're married now. So it should be Mrs. Malini. So I also have the Malini Agarwal handle, which is much more my personal life and, you know, the, you know, the stuff I do from a business perspective um, and so that's why we have all the different handles and the one we're really excited about having recently launched is Miss Malini Trending which basically covers influencers just like we cover celebrities because they are the new stars of today everybody wants to be an influencer they love them and there are a lot of influencers creating a lot of positive content right now that's very relatable um, and all like you're an influencer there's everybody who's creating these lives and stuff is doing that so we're trying to make an effort to also showcase them and not just you know, Bollywood celebrities. So we're pretty excited about that. That is pretty awesome. So, you know, uh, let's talk about some of the interesting, like I saw a question right now from uh, somebody who said, Who's, who was a pleasure to interview uh, from the Bollywood uh, scene? But, you know, instead of being so specific, I want to talk about you've actually in, in your career, in, even in these last 12 years itself, you've spoken to literally hundreds of people uh, on sure. your various uh, platforms. For you uh, as an interviewer or as a, as a person creating content, which was that one thing that you were excited about, Bollywood or otherwise, where you got an opportunity to go and talk to somebody and say, hey, let's, let's make some content with this person? I mean, I've had quite a few exciting experiences. I really liked the show Stranger Things and I got to go to Japan and interview Millie Bobby Brown, which was really cool to interview her and do it in Japan. So that was kind of like an exciting time. Um, aside from that, I've had really amazing conversations with uh, a couple of celebrities. I'll tell you one that really stands out to me since, you know, people ask that question. I didn't know Sushmita Sen very well, but I was, I've heard all amazing things about her. And I was doing a show called Inside Access since I was chatting with her. And once we finished the conversation, um, we were sort of talking about adoption. And then, you know, I was like, okay, we should roll this again because I think it's relevant. And you know, obviously she's adopted her daughters. And she said the best thing I've ever heard about adoption, you know, because I was telling her, you know, I've been thinking about it as well. But, you know, in India, a lot of people say, and it's terrible that they say Tumara Khun nahi hai. you know there's a lot of old you know orthodox thinking about it and she had the she's like you know the next time somebody says that you should tell them that when you fall in love with someone and you get married you accept that and everybody comes and celebrates the fact that you're marrying a complete stranger who you're not related to and spending the rest of your life with them so then why can't you have the same experience with a child who's so much more malleable and I was like that's amazing it's so simple but it is the best um, explanation and description of adoption I've ever heard. And so I try to tell everyone this because it was so genius and that's always stayed with me. And it was not, not a conversation I was expecting to have in a Bollywood interview. 
That's fantastic. By the way, for all of you who are wondering, if you wonder why I pantomime so much, it's because there is a lag on Instagram lives. Yeah. So, say something while she's talking, she will not be able to hear me, and I'll not be able to hear her. So, when someone's talking, I just do things with my hands. It may look That's silly, but smart. it makes sense. Yeah. It's very, so, and very smart. somebody else asked a very interesting question over here. How does your team manage to keep the huge audience engaged in your social media handles? It must be overwhelming. This is witness Sakshi. Hi, Sakshi. Good to have you here. So, how, how do you do that? Because you now, uh, how big of a team do you have? How many people work at Miss Malini Entertainment? So now we have a team of 65 people. So that actually really helps because we have a big team. Um, and, you know, there's different people who handle the different handles. And you must have seen when you go to any of the handles, you'll see a caption with the person's name because I think it's very important for them also to create a personality for themselves. So you'll always see who has done it. So you'll see the Bollywood team or the fashion team or the trending team and their names on it. Um, but we have a lot of departments now. So obviously, aside from the content team, we, you know, which also has showbiz and trending and fashion and beauty and lifestyle, uh, we've also kicked off something called Malini's Girl Tribe, which is a community um, for women. And I feel that it's really important for women to have a safe space on the internet because all of us know all girls have a mailbox or DMs filled with junk. And you see, like even right now, people are writing some ridiculous comments. So you, you'll get that all the time. Um, so I wanted to create a space where it's just women. And now there's 40,000 women. And it's amazing because we are able to, and you know, I know there's a lot of nice guys out there like you who would be, I'd love to have part of that conversation. Maybe one day we can combine groups. But right now in India, it has to be just women. And we talk about everything and there'll be hundreds of comments. And what I love is, see, the reason people got on social media is to connect with people on a scale that you can't keep up with in real life. I can have 5,000 friends on Facebook, but I can't do that in real life. Plus, I came online thinking, wow, I can now connect with 7 billion people or 4 billion, however many on online. Um, you come online and nobody responds. So you feel really lonely. Then you see other people living these fabulous lives that are curated Instagram feeds and, you know, influences perfect lives. And you feel even worse. And only celebrities and famous people get responses or love or comments or views. But what I love is in Girl Tribe, everybody is a hero. So no post ever gets unanswered. There are hundreds of comments on every post and you can ask about anything. It's literally about, you know, travel or food or love or mental health or work. And right now there's a lot of people dealing with everything from domestic violence at home to also just how to, you know, what hobbies to practice during the lockdown. So I really encourage people to come and check it out. It's a free group um, and launching an app soon. And I really am amazed. And one of the things that we're doing is we're doing some fun virtual parties. So we did cocktails with Rahul Khan now. We're doing one with Gohar Khan on Thursday. So I'm trying to marry my celebrity connections and network to this. Because I think, you know, at the end of the day, I want to leave a legacy behind. Something that's, you know, worth something. Now you, you said something very, very important. And, uh, you, you know, you talked about how people write shit everywhere. And, you know, it's important for not just women, for for any artist, and you know, I feel even younger men who are artists, who are singers, who are musicians, they face a whole bunch of trolling as well. And, and you know, here's, here's a simple thing that I have been doing whenever, you know, I keep looking at the, so you might wonder, especially when you do an Instagram live chat, you're looking at your guest and you're looking comments. at the comments, your eyes kind of keep going up and down. And all I do, and I'm, I'm saying this to everybody out there. If there is a troll out there, whoever thought that they can come on any of these chats and write shit about the people whom I'm speaking with, all I do is I just click on your name and I do hide life from that person. I don't want to engage with you. I don't want to acknowledge you by talking about what you are saying or telling you you shouldn't be writing such things. You do what you want to at your own time, but you don't do it over here. And, you know, I love the fact that there's an entire space that you've created, Malini, for women to feel safe and to be able to talk about the things that they love. Because, you know, I just saw somebody right now say something ridiculous and I don't even want to address yeah. it. I think it's so important. I, I, I did a live a couple of days ago on, on YouTube and I said this, that, you know, for every content creator out there, Malini, I'm going to take a, a half a minute to address something that you kind of brought up. And I've just said this. This is a message that I'm giving. And I, I love the fact that I have Malini here because... I hope that this message reaches out to a lot of people through her as well, is that every content creator, every person who puts his uh, art out there or his heart out there is doing it after a lot of internal struggle. You know, like they think a lot. Most people think a lot before they put out anything. And it takes no effort to, if you don't like that, you don't have to like everything that everybody yeah. puts out don't have to go and say something mean or something negative if you don't like something. You know, I, I gave an example, even Adele, who is like universally loved, you will go and see on her YouTube video, there are enough dislikes on her video. So there's somebody out there who doesn't like Adele or there's somebody out there who doesn't like Michael Jackson, which is cool. 
you don't have to just spend time in your day to go on somebody's handle and be mean to them if you can be positive be positive if you can't be positive just move on that's what you i know, feel I, about content in general something. so i you know i'm writing my second book right now and it is on this topic and i think that what's really important to understand is that see we we see the trolls and yes you're right to say yeah so hide the ignore block absolutely fine but i think the problem is deeper than this and i think that if we keep ignoring it or we keep saying fine you live your life and i'm going to just ignore you we don't solve the problem and so i know it's a very big problem to solve but i think that the missing piece here is that we went and you know i'm i'm 42 so i'm a micro generation the zennials who used to go to libraries to you know research things and then you have millennials and then you have gen uh, you know z and then you have alpha and one thing that's missing in that progress is that we were never taught how to behave on social media you're taught how to drive a car how to eat how to behave you're taught to you know cover your mouth when you cough nobody taught us how to behave we sort of jumped into it and are learning and flailing so if i gave you the keys to my car and said go for it you crash you know so oh hi janice uh so i think I it's really important to um have this solved so i'm literally trying to write a textbook a tongue in cheek textbook about how to behave online and i think there's very three simple things if you don't have time to read the book i'll tell you now what they are is just follow these three simple rules and i think it'll change how you behave one never write anything you can't say to somebody's face which is a very simple one in general which you can follow as somebody who's commenting stop and say would i have the balls to say this to someone if i was in front of them to spark joy you know mary kondo has an amazing show called uh you know tidying tidying up where she says hold on to the things that spark joy but what if you also gave out things that spark joy and make sure that what you're giving someone else is positivity which is something we all need today and the third is remember that followers are people too and i'll be honest with you i and you and everyone struggles with the same thing no matter how big a creator you are your eyes will wander to the less they'll wander to the followers and you will feel bad that you didn't get as many you'll wonder how come not so many people are watching the live it's just absolutely absolutely normal behavior but what i've tried to do now is every time i start feeling that spiral i go to somebody else's handle and leave a positive comment so that kind of perpetuates positivity because they might have been feeling that that day but then my comment might make them feel better so what if you what if i told you literally that the new currency of the world is positivity how much are you worth and it's something that you have an infinite amount of you can create as much of it as you want so i'm quite excited about the future because i think we are the generation that will teach our children how to use social media yeah. that is fantastic and you know if i could right now I'd just give you a virtual hug because but i can give you a virtual hug i can't give you a real one but that's <laughs> that's beautiful you know i mean uh, listen speaking of books malini has one book out already if you don't already have it uh you know tomorrow when this video goes up on the youtube channel i'm going to give you a link to amazon where you can go and pick up her first book and i'm Thank looking you. forward to check out the new book when it comes out have you figured out a title for the second book the first one was called to the moon and back right yeah it's to the moon how i blog my way to bollywood i have a couple of uh, titles in play i'm thinking of either calling it the accidental troll or potentially catching the light because we're always told when you're holding selfies to catch the light but i'm working on it if anyone has a suggestion feel free <laughs> so I, i see a lot of young women lot of young people who always ask i'm sure you get this question quite a lot how do we join miss malini this is i mean i just saw this question at least four times already on this chat how does one join miss malini well first of all hi vinu and hi sakshi they're so loving and they always throw so much love at me whenever i'm doing anything and hi pony um you know i just want to say that when you have people who send love and positive comments it really does offset the negativity and it is so much more valuable because it triggers that dopamine it's a happy thing you know uh it makes you feel good um so i think that the most important thing and sorry i forgot your question while i was saying hi to everyone no no i asked question? you how yeah. do people join miss malini ah, a oh, lot sorry, of sorry. yeah So I mean the thing is we do constantly hire and right now we would be looking for more uh freelance positions obviously because people are working from home you can email asif a s i f at misfire.com who's head of hr and i recommend that when you write in um you tell him what it is that you're looking to do so it doesn't really matter seeing a resume i don't really uh need you to be you know an mba or a particular a lot of people who just jump right out of school or college and join us i want to know what you want to do and i think the other question i always ask people when i hire is 
beyond what you'll do here, what is your dream? I'm living my dream. So I want to know what your dream is. What do you want to be? Where do you want to see yourself? And it's okay if it changes every few years. Because I want to give you a job at my company that will help you learn the tools to get to your dream. Because that means you'll work harder, you'll be happier, and literally everybody wins. Because beyond me just running my business and making money and being successful, the true mark of success really is if you create a company where when people leave, they become more successful than you. That's the real win, I feel, you know, because I think we've gotten so caught up in this whole rat race of money and work. And, you know, I think the world is being reset by somebody, some force that's saying, guys, just stop, pause, reboot, which is what's happening to all of us now where we're realizing what's really important. And we're not here for this. You know, we're, we're here for what, 80, 100 years max. You don't take, they always say, no, you, the cliche, you come alone, you go alone, you don't take anything with you. So what are you leaving behind? What is the value that you created? It has to be some value that you changed a life, that you made something happen, that you made a difference. And making a difference doesn't mean just making money for yourself. So I think that that's part of uh, the new us. Maybe like Mr. Modi said, uh, lockdown version four. Maybe this can be the, you know, you know, the human race version four. That is really cool. And... Uh... And, you know, it's such a beautiful answer. So for whoever asked that, please uh, uh, get in touch. Uh, I, I have the worst memory, so I'll listen to this again. I'll hear the email ID and I'll put it down in the info section That's as well. So sure. Asif at Miss Malini. That's right. Asif at MissMalini.com. And hi, you Akash. So Thanks for watching. Hi, Chinme. Hi, Sanju. It's a sweet, uh, you know, people are sitting on their... Uh, evening and watching us when they could go anywhere in the world and they're being nice about it and sending love and that's that's a great thing. I absolutely agree. You know, I, I'll end up saying this at least once every night because I've been doing live sessions since the 30th of March and I always say this yeah. that with 500 different live conversations happening on Instagram, the fact that whatever number of people are here with us, watching us live, it means a lot to me and I'm sure it means a lot to Malini as well. So thank you for, thank you to everybody who's joined us right now. Malini, apart from uh, your Girl Tribe, uh, which you've done on Facebook, right? That's a yeah. Facebook group that yeah. you... Yeah, it's also on Instagram. It's also on Instagram. Okay. Uh, sorry, I thought I lost you for a second with the internet. But I was saying, apart from that, you are... Can you hear me now? You can't hear. I think there's an internet issue. Le oh, they Malini just left. And let me see if I can get her back on again. I'm adding her back on again. Getting her back on again. Yeah, man. Savage and wise lady for sure. Oh, yeah. There you go. Can you hear me now? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So I'm saying apart from your Miss Malini's Girl Tribe, uh, which is on Instagram and on Facebook, I know you're using your position of being an influencer for other, you know, other good causes as well. Can you tell us a little bit about what else is happening with you. So I think for us, what we like to do is, you know, people ask me this question, right? First, some people will be like, okay, but you're an entertainment. Why don't get involved in causes? Or some people will say, uh, why are you writing about entertainment? You should only focus on causes. I think the correct thing is balance because I think nobody would be listening to me if I wasn't creating content that they find entertaining. And I always find that the people who need the most direction or empowerment uh, don't know they need it, especially women in this situation. And they don't know where to go looking for it. And I don't think empowerment needs to be boring and serious or an angry girls club. You know, we love men. I know so many amazing men. You, my husband, my brother, my friends. Um, and I think it's important to find a new way of saying things that you champion positively, right? It's not men against women. It's men and women against shitty people. And that's a combined effort. And that's why I always feel like even if you see things that happen, like the boys locker room or you hear of other things, it's very important that guys join the conversation because men are the biggest role models for other men. So one of the things we do want to focus on is this um, positive masculinity. The other thing, which is literally what the focus of is, aside from my book with Malini's Girl Tribe, is how do we make the internet a kind of place, you know? And let's get to the bottom of why do we lash out online? Is it that it's lost in translation on text? Is it the one misplaced emoji? And why do we carry so much of that anger and hate and you know, defensiveness online? Is it just because we're doing it with strangers? And how come we behave differently um, when we're around people. So just trying to get to the root of this. And I think it all stems from, and we all know the answer, right? There aren't, the, even the trolls are not necessarily 
criminals or evil people all the time. Sometimes it's just someone who's really lonely and angry and sad. And I have seen so often when I've replied to a troll, they've suddenly been so happy that they got a response that they turn around. And you have to, well, you know, you have to just dis differentiate with the different kinds of people and who's doing it for attention and who's doing it for the right reasons. And my therapist, and I recommend therapy to everyone, my therapist told me the best thing ever once. She said, you must approach the world with a shield of empathy and kindness and not necessarily for other people, for yourself. Because once you can be empathetic and kind to someone who's even being mean to you realize that they must be going through, through something that's making them this way and it probably has nothing to do with you and as a result then you won't feel bad about yourself and you won't so so these aren't specifically causes the way that you think of causes but this is kind of where my mind is at of trying to address things like this because more and more now you hear about people dealing with toxic environments domestic violence has gone up such a big you know in a big way right now and sometimes people just need someone to hear them I think I've mentioned this many times. It's in my book, but I'll tell you again because I think you like it. There's a line from a movie called Shall We Dance that says, you know, there are 7 billion people on the planet. So what does one life really mean? In a marriage or a friendship, I'm saying I'm going to be there for the good, the bad, the ugly, the mundane. Your life will not go unnoticed because I will notice it. Your life will not go unwitnessed because I will be your witness. And what is social media? It's a witness, a double tap, a like, a share. It's someone saying, I see you and hence you feel I matter. But at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, one, what am I making them witness, right? And two, what kind of witness am I being? And if you can get to the answer of those two questions and you can mentally feel comfortable with what those answers are, <clears throat> then you're in a good place. That's, oh man, that, that's such an incredible uh, thought and such an incredible answer. And you know what, for everybody watching right now, uh, I hope you guys, I hope you guys see the, the fantastic positive message that you are getting over here and how everybody is responsible for how they uh, are on social media. It's the little things, like she said, you know, just going, even with your friends, it doesn't need to be a celebrity. Sure, you can go on, and, you know, you could be following 500 celebrities and, you know, you could be putting up hearts and, you know, uh, uh, love emojis which is, in your... Which is fine, which is also fine. Which is fine. You know? Yeah, but just yeah. go and do it to your friend as well. If, if your friend yeah. has got to put up a song or if he's got a new instrument or if he's singing or if he's saying a poem, just go there and say something positive. You, you will and, not know... And, how much of a difference you, you make? You, it's such an interesting. Uh, hi, Soul Curry. She's watching right now, by the way. Uh, so, so like Soul Curry, she's always she logs in. We we work together as well, which is one of my best friends, and she'll always log in and say hi or wave or something. And there's something about it, even for us who do lives and are online on the big daily, it still feels good. It's just like on the radio when a friend of yours would listen and message and say, "Hey, I'm listening." It's that same amazing feeling that we get, and it's so nice to be able to return it. And I'm just gonna yeah. say, everybody who's watching should go and check out uh, Soul Curry's just launched on launched her in, uh, YouTube channel and she has some hilarious sketches based on all the shows that we're really loving right now so Money Heist Special Ops um, here you should check it out it's really really funny 100% hey Soul Curry good to see you here and you know what listen we're going to be spreading the love here I'm going to find out your YouTube channel once we are done and when this video goes up I'm going to give you a link to Soul Curry's YouTube channel as well because Malini recommends it and I definitely want to go and check it out so uh, yeah man we'll do, we'll do that and listen I know you got to get out because you got another thing that you got to do but before you leave uh I want to get back to something fun. You started this conversation by saying that years ago, you started off as a dancer with Subir. You did that. And I see you've been putting up a whole bunch of dance videos on your uh, Instagram handle as well, learning some dance steps and doing some interesting things. How, how, what are you doing to keep yourself occupied as dance? One of those things, apart from that, what else have you been do, doing during this quarantine, which is not really work, just something for Malini? Uh, so I'm a huge nerd when it comes to puzzles. So I have a 3000 piece puzzle that I'm making, which is the New York skyline. And I love coloring books. So I have these coloring books, which are like, you know, adult size from uh, Good Earth. And I love to color. And um, recently I have been practicing my own makeup. So I have my own makeup station here. And every morning I do my makeup with my unicorn mug. So random little things. And of course, binging shows. If you have any recommendations, I've run out of things to watch. So I'm happy to hear it. <laughs> So I, I, I have a few recommendations, but I'm, but I'm going to give yeah. them to Malini on WhatsApp because I know she's in a bit of a hurry right now. She's, you know, I, I know 
busy person but i'm glad we could make the time today to chat it's I always such a joy to talk to you you know it, it really is and today's session was really really special because it wasn't just an interview there's a lot that a lot of us including myself uh, learned and that i'd love to share you know this message that you've given today is something that i champion as well and i'd love to share it as often as possible so thank you manani for the incredible content that you've created over these years for creating a safe space for women and for people to enjoy good entertainment and uh, more power to you i hope you keep doing tons and tons of more stuff and you go from 65 people to 650 in the years to come so you know awesome oh, stuff that's really sweet and me me here i must tell you i you know i've watched your journey for so long and i actually really owe you because i remember the first time um i had a celebrity come as a guest it's because of you because you had recommended to imran khan to watch to listen to my show and then that sort of spiraled into a lot of things so i i owe you for that and i think you do a fantastic job of these interviews uh, i i really like how you really know what you're talking about and you're having a real conversation and i think this is really smart the miming i'm going to start doing that in, in my lives um one last thing i'm going to say is we you know uh, john krizinski kicked off a show called some good news which is fan fantastic and he just covers good news so we kicked off a spin off because he's been asking for international correspondence uh so you can come and check it out and if you have any good news to report whether you attended a zoom wedding or something fun happened just to give us a break from any of this you know negative news and the overdose of coronavirus scary news uh it's just some good news and we did a really fun thing so we had rithik roshan surprise a 9 year old girl or on her birthday decided to give out bags of kindness instead of asking for a present herself and she's 9 which is amazing so please come check out some good news we'd happy to share yours you can email malini at mismalini.com or just hashtag some good news india so we can pick it up hey that's that sounds like a great idea please do that uh, and listen i guess most of you are already following all of her handles or at least the ones that are relevant to you because now she's diversified and put out fashion and bollywood and hindi and everything else so follow all the handles that you love but also follow malini agarwal because there's going to be a lot of awesome stuff from her not just from the bra- bra- brands that you know that are representative of miss malini entertainment but for tonight thank you to everybody who joined us uh check this video out tomorrow if you joined us late or whatever check it out on the youtube channel of the mj show but for right now that's malini agarwal i'm meher joshi and we're going to be saying bye 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 thanks for here thanks everyone for watching take care see you soon and uh, listen guys i know that our prime minister has announced lockdown 4.0 so don't worry like you've been doing for the last three take care of yourself stay home stay safe be Uh, be nice to people on social media like malmi said and uh, i will see you again uh, tomorrow evening i've got i've got some great guests lined up uh, what's the day today man it's come to a point where you don't remember what the days are oh yeah i remember today is tuesday and tomorrow i have uh, i have a fan i have two fantastic lyricists who are going to be joining me i've got vayu who's also actually both of them are lyricists and also singing in their own steps i've got vayu and kunal verma who are going to be joining me and i've got some good news for people who uh, hated the fact that benny dayal was accidentally uh, out of our conversation because of internet issues he is going to be back on saturday 9 pm we will continue our chat with benny dayal I'll find out a little bit more about his new song which drops tomorrow on his youtube channel so we'll find out about that i'm going to give you a swipe up link to his new punctuation song today after this chat gets over and abhiruchi uh, sings new song chalo chale so check those out give them some love like i said when you go to that youtube channel leave a heart leave a comment tell them what you thought about the song do the same with my channel as well for everybody who uh, <clears throat> joined us today thank you so much thank you very very much for being here with us take care of yourself and i'll see you soon